all right what's going on guys we're gonna jump into another theory video we just did um i think it was a couple of days ago we did um how will jamie's stories and is he the true e hero of game of thrones which i don't believe but this one is about cersei as basically saying how will cersei's story end now in my belief i don't think she's going to survive season eight in the show in a tv show so i don't think she's going to survive going through that because it's the final season so i don't think she's going to survive season eight um who i think will kill her i think it would be poetic if jamie does it um there's plenty of people i would love to see kill her um aria um sansa uh, not necessarily john um you know i don't think it would be as satisfying if if the nearest kills her I think it would be either one of those two, one of the Stark girls um, would be more satisfying. You know, Jamie killing her would be poetic in its own, would make a lot more sense for the story, um, would be unbelievable to see, because it would be like, why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he loves her so much. He's done so much for her. You know what I'm saying? Could he really bring himself to actually kill her who knows so let's jump into this theory man and see what ash effects has to say about this and it'll really help out this channel thanks in season six of the game of thrones show elena tyrell wonders if cersei is the worst person she's ever met cersei does do a lot of terrible things while the wife of king robert she has a secret incestuous relationship with her twin brother jamie passing off their illegitimate kids as Robert's rightful heirs, undermining the political system of Westeros and leading to war. When Arya Stark tangles with Cersei's son Joffrey, Cersei has the innocent direwolf Lady executed, and tries to get Arya maimed or killed. Cersei kills King Robert by getting him drunk during a hunt, then she ignores the king's will to have Ned Stark serve as regent and instead has Ned imprisoned. That's all in Book One. In Book 2, Cersei has Robert's baby bastard Barra murdered, along with her mother. Cersei has an innocent woman, Alayeya, Roz in the show, brutally beaten in an attempt to hurt Cersei's brother Tyrion. She may also be responsible for Sir Mandon's attempt on Tyrion's life. In Book 3, Cersei wrongfully accuses Tyrion of killing Joffrey, which gets Tyrion sentenced to death. In Book 4, Cersei really goes to town. She has the High Septon killed, has some innocent dwarfs killed, has some innocent guards killed, and tries to have Bronn and Tristane Martell and Jon Snow killed. She just loves killing. She also sends a bunch of women to Kyburn to be used in horrific experiments, and brutally tortures an innocent bard. She tries to frame Marjorie Tyrell and others for crimes that they didn't commit, and makes a bunch of bad political decisions. She stops paying the Crown's debts, gives an expensive fleet of ships to an unqualified pretty boy who steals them and becomes a pirate, and she lets the Faith Militant arm themselves, leading to the rise of the High Sparrow. After this farce and disaster, Cersei's crimes catch up with her. She is imprisoned by the Faith and takes a walk of shame. That's as far as the books go so far, but in Season 6 of the show, Cersei wreaks revenge. She blows up the Sparrows right, and- wait a second! Wait a second. So you guys are trying, you're trying to tell me right now that this is in the books? Not this part. The whole walk, the, the whole, um, the, the walk of shame or whatever you want to call it that she did. That's in the book. Cause that didn't happen until the end of season five. So man, you guys confuse me so much. If this guy is right, then that simply means that wouldn't that wouldn't that mean that John's death is in the books? I, I don't. I'm so confused sometimes by people coming, uh, people making comments on the channel. I need to go check. I need to go see. I'm. You know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to check this out for myself, because you guys are not proven to be legitimate sources. You book readers out there, you're not proven to be legitimate sources if you have not read the books. Because I mean, if the if all right. If they have the walk of shame in the book, um, I can understand if John's death is not in the book, or is it? I don't know. So, but I'm trying to figure out what's really going on here. What are you guys trying to tell me 
is in the book. Because if that's in the book, because that happens at the end of season five, right? Because you guys said the books end at the end of season four. So everything that happened in season five, the whole rise of the high sparrow and all of that stuff, that stuff and, and arming the fate militant, all that stuff is in the books. Is it not? Let me know in the comment section, please, please. And send me legitimate stuff. Like I like when people send me quotes from the books that prove the legitimacy. Okay. Don't just say it's not because you have not read it. Okay. Or say it is send me proof. Okay. As I'm going to start researching this stuff for myself and not depend on y'all for this because you know, this is some really misleading stuff. Because some people say the books end at the end of season four. Some people say it's after that. Like, I'm confused now because now this guy, I've been following him for a little bit now watching his videos. And he seems to know what he's talking about. And he has the references, right? He has the references because if you go back just a little bit, you will see that these are stuff from the books, right? Like, right here. See, and he names which book it is. See, right here, which book it is. Right here, which book it is. Right? So, it's crazy to think that this stuff is in the books. Right? This is all from the books. This is the book. These are book references. Peter Baelish, um, Jenna Lannister, Jamie, Cersei, Cersei. Right? Crimes catch up with her. She's imprisoned by the faith and takes a walk of shame. That's as far as the books go so far. But in yeah, season see? six of the Cersei show, X Cersei AF. wreaks revenge. She blows up the Sparrows and Tyrells with wildfire and crowns herself Queen of Westeros. I didn't in even know that the walk of shame was, of in, was in the evil books. evil queen type. So Cersei kind of is the worst. She hurts and kills <laughs> innocent people, destabilizes is. the country, and contributes to war. Should we call her a villain? A monster? Is she just cruel and selfish and stupid? A vile, evil bitch, in Marjorie's words? Or could there be more to Cersei Lannister? In the first three books of Thrones, we only see Cersei through the eyes of other characters, but starting in the fourth book, we get chapters from Cersei's point of view. We read her thoughts and feelings, her hopes and dreams, her past and glimpses of her future, so we can start to understand and maybe sympathize with this complex character. We can even predict how Cersei might die. Her story basically comes down to three main themes, power, love, and prophecy. The first line of Cersei's first chapter says she the dreams of, of sitting the is, iron. Hold on, hold on. This book is a feast for crows, right? This is what this means. This is a feast for crows? Confirm that for me. I'm pretty sure that that's what that abbreviation is for. Throne, high above them all. Cersei wants to rule. She lusts for power with every waking breath, and it's a particular kind of power that she wants. People like Stannis and Robert Baratheon and Robb Stark have power that you can see. They wear crowns and swing swords and lead armies, and everyone knows that they are in charge. In contrast, people like Varys and Littlefinger and Elena have a more subtle kind of power. They don't wear crowns or swing swords or lead armies, instead they have secrets, spies and schemes. Their influence is invisible, but very significant. Varys runs a conspiracy, Littlefinger causes war, and Elena kills King Joffrey and grows the power of her house. Without anyone even knowing it, these three are some of the most powerful people in Westeros. But Cersei True. isn't interested in this subtle kind of power. In the show, Littlefinger tells Cersei that knowledge is power, but then Cersei demonstrates in her words that power is power. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to influence events from the shadows. She wants people to know that she's in charge. She wants to sit the throne and for great lords and proud ladies to kneel before her. These ideas about visible power and pride are at the core of Cersei's personality, and they seem to have mostly come from Cersei's father, Tywin. Tywin was Cersei's only parent growing up, after her mother Joanna died giving birth to Tyrion. And Tywin is obsessed with family legacy, with Lannister power and pride. He says we must demonstrate the power of Castle Rock for all the realm to see. 
These ideas had a big impact on Cersei. She often thinks on the lessons Tywin taught her, and after Tywin dies, killed by Tyrion, Cersei thinks of herself as Tywin's heir. She wants to be seen as the inheritor of his legacy, and she tries to act as he would. The thing is, Tywin was brutal. He was responsible for some of the worst atrocities in Westeros. The extermination of the reigns of Castamere, the sack of King's Landing, Clegane's raids in the Riverlands, the Red Wedding, not to mention his cruel treatment of Tyrion and Tysha and others. The lessons Tywin taught are barbaric, stuff like never wound a foe when you can kill him, and the only way to keep your people loyal is to make them fear you, that people are tools to be used and that love is worthless. Cersei follows Tywin's cruel example, and in some of her darkest moments, like when she tortures an innocent bard or thinks about wiping out all the Ironborn, she tells herself that these things are okay because it's what Tywin would have done. So a lot of Cersei's brutality in her pursuit of power and pride comes from the lessons Tywin taught her. But there's a deeper conflict behind all this. Cersei thinks of herself as Tywin's only true son, as Lord Tywin with teats. There's a tension here, because Cersei Lannister is a woman. There are powerful women in Westeros. Look at Elena Tyrell, Asha, Catelyn, Sansa, Arya, Daenerys, Visenya right. and Rhaenys. <laughs> But Westeros is a patriarchal medieval society, which means unless you've got dragons, women usually aren't allowed to hold direct power in their own right. Some women hold subtler kinds of power like Elena, but Cersei isn't allowed to be powerful in the direct, visible way that Tywin is powerful. She can't sit the throne as Hand of the King like Tywin, she can't hold a war council like Tywin or lead an army like Tywin. When Tywin speaks, men obey. But when Cersei speaks, people often contradict her or refuse her, they push her aside, because, Cersei says, she's a woman. And this deeply frustrates Cersei. She is desperate to be the heir Tywin wanted, but she lacks the cock. Cersei constantly broods on the injustice of being excluded from power on account of her sex. She recounts how, when she was a child, Cersei and her twin Jaime looked so alike that no one could tell them apart, but they were treated so differently. Jamie was trained to fight with sword and lance, while Cersei was taught to smile and please. Jamie was heir to Castly Rock, while Cersei was to be married off to some lord. Jamie's fate was glory and power, while Cersei's was just marriage and childbirth. Cersei often wishes that she was born a man, because if she was a man, she could rule the realm in her own name and fight her enemies with a sword. But, she says, the gods in their blind malice had given her the feeble body of a woman. Cersei does use her sex to her advantage sometimes. She uses seduction to influence people like Jaime and Lancel and Osney. But she never really works out the kind of subtle power that makes women like Elena so influential. In fact, Cersei hates Elena, calls her a disgusting old crone, and calls Queen Marjorie a whore and murders her in the show. And Brienne, another powerful woman, Cersei calls a huge, ugly, shambling creature, dressed in man's mail. She calls Princess Elia Martell feeble, with black eyes and a flat chest, calls Lady Lysa Arryn a cow, and calls scepters wrinkled cunts who are probably praying for a good raping. Cersei not only fails to emulate other powerful women, she hates them, and is cruelly critical of their female bodies. Cersei's like a self-hating woman, a female misogynist, and this is one of many contradictions in <laughs> Cersei's personality. She is desperate for power and pride like her father, but she's deeply frustrated by the limitations imposed on her as a woman. Cersei is also frustrated in her attempts to love. Her mother died when she was young, and her father Tywin was often away in King's Landing. She never had many friends. There were bedmaids and companions, but few lasted very long. Cersei's closest relationship was with her brother Jaime. They'd play in Castle Rock as children, and from a young age, they started to experiment sexually. When a maid caught them at it, the twins were separated and chastised because, you know, incest. But the message to Cersei here was that her most intimate relationship was something seen as shameful and wrong, something to hide. For a while, there was hope that Cersei might have a more socially acceptable relationship, because Tywin promised that Cersei would marry Prince Rhaegar, the son of King Aerys Targaryen. 
For years, Cersei was happy and excited about the prospect of marrying Rhaegar. He was beautiful and sensitive and strong, a dragon prince. Cersei dreamed of being his queen. But on the day Cersei was promised she'd be betrothed to Rhaegar, Aerys refused the match, and Cersei didn't get to marry the prince. She felt heartbroken and betrayed, a memory that still hurts all these years later. Yeah, Cersei was, was then told she'd marry too. someone better instead, but the man she ended up with was Robert Baratheon, the man who killed Prince Rhaegar. At first, Cersei was optimistic about this new husband, but on their wedding night when they first had sex, Robert drunkenly called Cersei Lyanna. Lyanna Stark was the sister of Ned, and died giving birth to Jon Snow. Robert loved Lyanna, and never could let go after she died. As Cersei says in the show, Lyanna was a corpse, and Cersei was a living girl, but Robert loved Lyanna more than her. Cersei came to hate Robert. She hated his drinking, and his infidelity, and his irresponsibility, and that he'd hurt her sometimes, and so Cersei secretly continued her relationship with Jaime. She says that she and Jamie are more than brother and sister. They are one person in two bodies. They shared a womb together, and when he is in her, she feels whole. The incest aspect is pretty icky here, and their relationship is messed up in other ways too. Cersei lies and manipulates Jamie and cheats on yes, Jamie, and does. apparently only loves him to the extent that he looks like her. So does Cersei really love Jamie, or does Cersei just love Cersei? It's, a it's exactly what I was saying back when I was watching the show and reacting to it. I was telling you guys, is it really love that they have for each other? And I don't believe it's actually love. I think it's just um, they are infatuated with the connection that they have as twins. And, all, and also, there, there's so many facets to it when you actually take time to actually break down this whole relationship because she has cheated on him as he said and i've i noticed that back when i was reacting to the show and i said to you guys it has nothing to do with just the fact that they you know they screw each other it's it's just i just don't believe because i was trying to tell you guys that when it comes on to jamie and brienne it's a more honest relationship and they're their chemistry on screen is unreal. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, I believe the true love lays there when it comes on to Jamie. Jamie and Brienne deserves to be with each other. But he just can't get... Man, Cersei must got some... She must got some of that good, good coochie, boy. She... <laughs> I mean, boy, it ain't love. It ain't love. I don't believe it's love. I believe it's just she controls him so much. She uses that coochie to control him, man. And I believe she knows she can do that. So she does it, you know. And that's why I was so happy when he walked away from her in season seven. Was like, I don't believe you. You ain't gonna do shit. You know what I'm saying? Does that prove that she loves him? No. That just proves that you know what I'm saying. It's still her brother. You know, and just like how she chose not to kill Tyrion when she, when he came to see her, you know, and when she finally knew that he didn't ki that he didn't kill Joffrey, you know what I'm saying? So there's really nothing, you know what I'm saying, other than the fact that he killed um, Tywin. Other than that, she has nothing to talk about. You know what I mean? So let's jump back into it, man. Let's back up a little bit. Really love Jamie, or does Cersei just love Cersei? For real, it's a dysfunctional relationship, but it's Very. the realest love that Cersei's ever had. Jamie is there for Cersei, fights for Cersei, and is the father of her three children. What is she Cersei do dreams now? of gone. loving Jamie and openly, and the, and the of living gone. with him as husband and wife with their kids, but because of the incest and because of Cersei's marriage to the king, she can never openly be with the person she loves. Her whole relationship history is a series of frustrations and denials. She wants Jaime, she can't have him. She wants Rhaegar, she ends up with Robert. In the same way that Cersei's denied the power and pride she desires, Cersei's also denied love. And these frustrations feed much of her cruelty throughout the series. But there's one more important theme to cover. Prophecy. When Cersei yes, was ten prophecy. years old, on the same day she hoped to be betrothed to Prince Rhaegar, she and some friends entered the tent of Maggie the Frog. 
Maggie was a witch, a fortune teller, so Cersei marched in and demanded to hear her future. Maggie granted three questions, so Cersei asked when she'd marry Prince Rhaegar, and Maggie said never, that Cersei would marry the king. Cersei asked if she'd be queen, and Maggie said Cersei will be queen until there comes another, younger and more beautiful, to cast Cersei down and take all that she holds dear. Cersei asked if she and the king would have children, and Maggie said the king will have sixteen children, and Cersei will have three. Gold shall be their crowns, and gold their shrouds, Maggie said. That's as far as the show goes, but in the books, Maggie continued, and added that when Cersei's tears have drowned her, the Valenquois shall wrap his hands about her pale white throat and choke the life from her. Maggie also prophesied the death of Cersei's friend Malara. So what does this all mean? Well, Maggie said that Cersei won't marry the prince, she'll marry the king. And at first, Cersei thought this meant she'll marry Prince Rhaegar after he becomes King Rhaegar. But that never happens. Rhaegar is killed, and the king Cersei marries is Robert. Maggie's also correct about Cersei's children. Robert has 16 bastards, including Gendry and Bower and Maya Stone, while Cersei has Joffrey, Marcella and Tommen, with Jaime. And Cersei's friend Malara does die. After Maggie's prophecy, Malara drowns in a well. In fact, it's strongly implied that Cersei pushed Malara, killed her young friend, partly because she thought Maggie's prophecy wouldn't come true if no one talked about it. So at ten years old, this was Cersei's first murder, and it was motivated in part by fear of Maggie's prophecy. Cersei is haunted by Maggie's words for the rest of her life. Maggie accurately predicted Cersei's husband and children, and the death of Malara, so Cersei's afraid the other parts of the prophecy will also come true. The Gold Shrouds, the Younger More Beautiful, and the Valenquois. The Gold Shrouds suggest that Cersei's children will die. The Younger More Beautiful bit suggests that another woman will cast Cersei down. As for the Valenquois that will choke the life from her, Valenquois means little brother, so Cersei believes that her younger brother Tyrion will try to kill her. Maggie's prophecy threatens everything that Cersei cares about most, her children, her power, and her life. So she tries desperately to avert the prophecy. She thinks Tyrion is the Valenqua, so she tries to have him killed. She believes Marjorie is the younger, more beautiful person, so she tries to get her killed by framing her for adultery. And she does everything she possibly can to protect her children. But it's never enough. Joffrey is murdered with poison and dies at his own wedding. Her daughter Marcella is sent to Dawn by Tyrion and is attacked in the books, dead in the show. Tommen is married to Marjorie, who Cersei feels is taking him away from her, and he ends up committing suicide in the show. He's still alive in the books, but probably not for long. So despite Cersei's best efforts, her children are taken from her, one by one, in golden shrouds, like Maggie predicted. Despite all her power, Cersei's unable to protect the ones she loves. Her attempts to protect herself by killing Tyrion also fail, and her attempts to protect her power by framing Marjorie totally backfire, getting Cersei locked up and humiliated. The more she fights, the worse things get, and in Feast, Cersei spirals into fear and paranoia, desperation and delusion, violence and cruelty. She sees dwarfs in every shadow, and makes foes of friends. She convinces herself that Tyrion and Marjorie are evil schemers out to get her. She declares that she'd kill all the common people in Westeros if that was what it took to keep Tommen safe. She's a terrible ruler. Cersei becomes everything that she hated about Robert. She drinks too much and cheats on Jaime and makes dumb decisions. Cersei even has sex with a woman and hurts her in bed, only to pretend the next morning that it never happened, exactly like Robert. In her desperation to protect her power and her children and her life, Cersei's choices get more extreme until she destroys herself politically. Ironically, it isn't Maggie's prophecy so much as Cersei's fear of the prophecy that causes her downfall. And prophecies are often She's like trying to that change her terms. future. The more you try to avoid them, the more you make them true. The mm. truth of Maggie's prophecy is not what Cersei thinks. Maggie said that Cersei will be queen until there comes another, younger and more beautiful, to cast Cersei down and take all that she holds dear. 
Cersei thinks that this is Marjorie, who is younger and arguably more beautiful. Robert but Marjorie Nearest. probably won't be the one to cast Cersei down. She's dead in the show. A more likely queen to cast Cersei down is Daenerys, now sailing mm -hmm. to take Cersei's throne. Danny is younger and said to be more beautiful, so she could perfectly fit Maggie's prophecy. But there's another cool possibility in Brienne, the one who takes Cersei's dear Jaime from her. Brienne is younger than Cersei, but she isn't more beautiful. In fact, in the books, Brienne is very ugly, so ugly that she's called the beauty as a cruel, sarcastic joke. But some fans argue that Brienne has a metaphorical inner beauty, her heroism, loyalty, and kindness, which does sound a bit lame and cliche, but it could make sense for Maggie the Frog. Maggie in the show looks like a sexy Halloween witch, but Maggie in the books is very ugly. Maybe she'd want to teach vain young Cersei a lesson by referring to a woman's inner beauty. Also, Catelyn thinks that Brienne's eyes are beautiful, and she thinks that just after saying that she'd like to wrap her hands around Cersei's white throat and choke her. Almost the exact wording of Maggie's Valenquois prediction. So there's definitely some connection here between Brienne and Maggie's prophecy, but Daenerys might still be a better fit for the person to cast Cersei down. Either way, all of Cersei's efforts against Marjorie were probably pointless, and only served for Cersei to screw herself over. Cersei is also probably wrong about the Valenquois, the little brother who will kill her. It's true that Tyrion threatens Cersei, and thinks that he would like to strangle her, but there's a different possibility that could be way more dramatic and cool. Many readers believe that the little brother who will strangle Cersei is Jaime. Right. Jaime is Cersei's other younger brother. He came out of the womb right after Cersei did. They've been lovers almost all their lives, but while Cersei grows ever more cruel and crazy, Jaime, in the books, takes a different path. After losing his hand, Jaime questions his identity and starts to change from the arrogant, selfish kingslayer, a man with shit for honour, into someone nobler, someone beginning to seek redemption. He questions his relationship with Cersei, until finally at the end of Feast, he rejects her entirely, burning a letter Cersei sent begging for help. Maybe Jaime will finally realise that his twin has become a monster. Maybe it'll be up to him to end her reign of terror. In season 6 of the show, Cersei destroys the Sept of Baelor with wildfire, and there are a lot of hints that she'll do something similar in the books. Cersei's often associated with wildfire, and she knows how to use it. But in the books, she probably won't just blow up the Sept, like she does in the show. In book 2, we're specifically told that wildfire is removed from beneath the Sept. So book ah. Cersei will do something else with wildfire, something far more dramatic. Cersei's interest in wildfire reminds Jaime of the Mad King Aerys. Aerys was a cruel and unpredictable ruler, and towards the end of his reign, with Robert's Rebellion about to usurp him, Aerys had caches of wildfire placed all over King's Land. Bruh. So many times I wish people sometimes, as you guys come on this channel and you hear me talk about certain things, right? You hear me talk about certain things, and you guys... I mean, some people, I want to say you guys, some people will come at me and they'll be like, there's no way you can call Cersei the Mad Queen. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I can. She loves wildfire. Okay? She loves it. You guys need to remember that even back before Blackwater Bay, it was Cersei that was getting wildfire. Okay, it was Cersei that was talking to the Pyromancer and Tyrion took over. Okay, it was Cersei. It wasn't anybody else. It was her. She's, and now it's confirmed that this is in the books. I have not started to read the books yet. Right, still trying to get around to find the time to get to them. Okay, this is crazy. Okay, when I tell you guys that, and it, it's not even a prediction. I just dubbed her the Mad Queen, and now... Even Jamie thinks she's like the freaking Mad Queen in the books. So book readers can't tell me shit now. You can't tell me shit. Because if 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 Jamie is complete, look at this. Cersei and Jamie let all of King's Landing see the flames. Now you sound like Ares. He's comparing her to Ares. 
And who knows Erie's better than Jamie? He killed the damn dude. Burn them all. Burn them all. Right? I'm telling you guys, man. It's just I see certain things. And I'm not saying I'm I'm no genius when it comes on to this stuff because I'm just getting into the lore of it. But this the one that's the only person I could think of. Um, there's nothing wrong with me dubbing Cersei the Mad Queen. There's not oh oh she has not gone to those lengths yet. Of course not. You get what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of stuff that Aries has done that we don't that I don't know about because I'm not a book reader. But if Jamie in the book is 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 um even comparing her to even put her in the same lane, that simply means that something struck a nerve. Something struck a nerve in Jamie, and Jamie said said this. It's something that he saw. Let's go back a little bit. That's why sometimes it's not that I want you guys to go with me on every single thing that I say, but sometimes it's just. I'm just drawing the parallel. I see what I see, right? Look at this. Jamie knew the look in his sister's, what's that, eyes. Jamie knew the look in his sister's eyes, reminding him of Aerys Targaryen. It's not so far-fetched to call, to to compare Cersei to, to, to the Mad King. It's just not. You know? It, it just isn't, man. Let's go back. Robert's Rebellion about to usurp him. Ares had caches of wildfire placed all over King's Landing, planning to burn down the whole city and everyone in it, leaving only ashes for Robert to rule over. He would have got away with it too if it weren't for Jaime, who killed the Mad King and his pyromancers, earning him the name Kingslayer. But thing is, a lot of Ares's wildfire is still down there beneath King's Landing. Maybe Cersei will use this wildfire to do what Ares attempted years ago, to destroy King's Landing and everyone in it. This could go down when Daenerys Targaryen, or maybe Aegon in the books, attacks the city. Cersei will realize that she can't beat the invaders, but she won't want to surrender. As we saw at the Battle of the Blackwater, Cersei would rather die than be captured by enemies. And with her back against the wall and her defeat at hand, all her fury and frustration will come to boil. All the slights on her pride and power, her exclusion due to her sex, the denial of her loves, her fear of a prophecy, her grief for her children, all that pain will light a fire. In Book 1, Cersei asks, What of Myra, Lord Stark? Game of Thrones is full of characters who fight and bleed for what they believe in. Rob Stark wars to avenge his father, Daenerys conquers for her throne, Jon Snow fights to protect the realm, but Cersei has never gotten the chance to fight, to express her desires with action. She's always had to wait to play a role, the dutiful daughter, the bride, the wife. She's suffered Robert's drunken groping, Jamie's jealousy, Renly's mockery. She's contended with Jon Arryn, Ned Stark, and Tyrion, all the while promising herself that one day it would be her turn. But her turn never comes. She never gets a firm grasp on power. She never gets to openly love. And all of her children die. So in the end, maybe Cersei will finally express her wrath, her rage from all these years, in full, the only way she can. She will set off Aerys's wildfire to burn down King's Landing, to destroy everyone who's ever defied her. And it'll be up to her twin Jaime to intervene. Just as he killed Ares to save King's Landing before, he'll be forced to kill his twin, Cersei. He will wrap his hands about her pale white throat and choke the life from her. One of Jaime's hands is gold, so he might strangle her with the Hand of the King necklace that Tyrion used to kill Shay. The links of the chain are hands, and we know Cersei has the necklace in Feast. And Jaime has thought about strangling a woman with a necklace before. And in the Season 7 trailer, Cersei stands on a part of Westeros called the Neck, while Jaime stands on a region called the Fingers. So the hints are all here for Jaime to strangle Cersei to death. Jaime will kill his lifelong lover, his other darker half, in an attempt to save the city from wildfire again. But this time, 
he'll be too late. Cersei and Jaime came into the world together, and both of them believe that they'll die together. So as Jaime chokes his twin to death, the wildfire will rise around them, killing them both, leaving only the ashes and burned out throne room that we've seen in visions. In her desperate greed for power and love, Cersei will destroy her throne, and her love, and herself. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks to Nina Friel pause? and to Lady Gwyn of Radio Westeros for feedback on this script. Radio Westeros have a great podcast episode about Cersei and Jaime. Check it out for another perspective on Cersei's character. Lots of the ideas in this video come from the Song of Ice and Fire fan community. Check out the subreddits and westeros.org. And please do sign up at all. All right, so there you go, guys. Um, it's crazy, man. Like, woo! Where how will her story end? As I said before at the beginning of this video, um, I think it would be very poetic if Jamie kills her. And you guys got these words, man. You got the prophecy of the Valon car and all this other stuff. It's it just would be. I think I've said most of what I wanted to say during the video. I paused a couple of times to express my feelings about what's go what he was explaining. And it's crazy, man. I'm telling you. That's why I dubbed her the Mad Queen because you know, it's only two people that are really that of of um not necessarily affiliated, but um it's like they 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 just in love with the idea of using wildfire like Tyrion never loved it if you see the look on Tyrion's face when the battle at Blackwater Bay right if you saw the look on his face when he was looking at it it's, you know it's like oh shit I didn't expect it to be this bad <laughs> you know what I mean so it was it, it, it was crazy it's like Cersei's just like when she was looking at the set blowing up she was like yes Yes, I did that. I did that for you, Tommen. I killed everybody because they wanted to kill us. Yes. <laughs> right? So it was like it was like that. So it's crazy, man. I mean, Cersei's, however it ends, it will end, and I, I, and I will be happy for her to go. It, it's, you know, she needs to go. She's one of those characters that you can't understand why she's still here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's like... We kill everybody else, but the pretty much the most evil person in the show is still alive. You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes on to to evil with no regrets, with no um, sort of remorse, that is Cersei, point blank. That is her. That's her personality from day one. She will kill anybody that comes against her family. She doesn't care who you are. She destroyed House Tyrell destroyed house tyrell and now she's about to destroy house martell she has she gives zero shits about anybody in anything okay um i think if she got a chance she i, I mean she could have killed jamie but she let him go um i don't know if in the tv show i know definitely i believe that in the books cersei will die but I don't know if that's going to happen in season eight. If it does, I will be happy about it. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, a lot of people, there are Cersei fans out there, believe it or not. You know, she's a very intriguing character, very, very integral to the show. You need somebody like that in TV shows like this. You need somebody that you absolutely um, hate. You don't like anything about them. They're the absolute... Um, the absolute um person to root against you you have no qualms about it there's no redemption or anything like that you have to have one of those characters you know what i'm saying um so i'm happy that there was a character like this that was written like this that been she's been through a lot too don't get me wrong she's been through a lot but and and it's who what her is and that's another mark of good storytelling right is that is just another mark of good storytelling when you actually look at it because when you when you actually see what's really going on right of cersei and we know what 
you know what she went through there's so much that she went through you know what i'm saying so you can look at it from one point to the next and and don't have to worry about oh my god is this going to happen or not you just know where she's coming from because you know what her backstory is and what the circumstances have made her into right so it's awesome man it's just awesome man i could talk about game of thrones all day all day all day and i know you guys appreciate these videos um made some comments earlier doing doing the video hope you guys don't take it the wrong way it's not that i'm saying that i'm smarter than you guys or anything like that it ain't about that it's just that i i really don't like when people come in the comment section they're like how can you say that about cersei she's nothing like aries and i'm like um yes she is <laughs> you know yes she is she's shown some of those qualities you know what i'm saying and now she's sitting on the damn iron throne come on guys you know what i'm saying it's just some very simple things you know what i mean some very simple things that you can grasp from just watching the show and it's, it's not so far-fetched to compare her to to the to the um mad king you know and now that i know that jamie actually did i mean who else can 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 put some kind of validity to that other than jamie I mean, he killed the damn Mad King. He knew everything about the Mad King. And for him to make a statement like that is huge. It's huge. Okay? So, thank you guys for watching as always, man. It's the first time you're watching. It's going to be a long video. But this is the first time you're watching. You got through this video, man. You already know how I feel about Game of Thrones, man. You already know how I feel. Go back, watch some videos of me just talking about Game of Thrones. We chop it up over here. We chop it up over here. All comments are welcome. But don't expect it. To just sit there you know you're gonna get challenged because that's what this community is all about thank you guys for watching leave a like on this video leave a comment in the comment section as always thank you guys for watching you know who it is your boy terabyte reacts and peace